Salam alaikum, everybody. How are you this evening? I said, Salam alaikum, everybody. How are you this evening? It's such a pleasure to be here. It's such an honor um, to be here among musicians, scholars, friends, people who I haven't seen for years. Um, my name is Manira Pilgrim. I am a spoken word, I am a poet, and I'm going to share with you some poems today. Um, the first poem that I'm going to share with you is interesting because I converted to Islam in 2005, literally three weeks before the 7-7 bombings. And so I, people ask me, what is it like being a Muslim? What is it like being a black Muslim? What is it like being a Muslim woman in a sort of post-2005 era? And I'm like, I don't know, because this is my experience. But what I have noticed is that sometimes for people there's like some precarity around me being a black Muslim, almost like uncertainty, like, are you really Muslim? Like, sometimes I go into spaces and it's really sad to say, but people don't think I should be Muslim, maybe because of my color, despite the fact of the vast knowledge, the vast, like, you know, um, empires that were Muslim empires, like in Mali, like in Senegal, like in Nigeria. And so this poem is really dedicated to Muslims who feel marginalized, whether that is Muslims who feel marginalized because they're young and they're in this um, era, in this world, and like there's sometimes a bit of a distance between parents and family, whether it's because of color, whether it's because of culture, whether it's because you, you're not the um, majority in a particular situation. This is dedicated for you, and it's called When They Speak of Muslim. Bismillah. When they speak of Muslims, they are not speaking of Wallahi, Nike Air Harachis, five wings and chips boss, false lashes, turbans and black hijabs, gold tooth Jordans and Joe Bobs and black niqabs. They're not speaking of halal beef patties, salat al fati, ayat al kursi, ukdis and akis. They're not speaking of Fatima, who is also Tracy, nor Mohammed, who is sometimes Mo. They're not speaking of jazz, blues, and bebop, of Pharaoh Sanders and the Love Supreme, of reggae sound systems and the sound men who have now found Allah, of Marcus Garvey, of Bob Marley, of Crepton Conan and Little Sims. They're not speaking of people the color of ravens with diamond chiseled cheeks constructed on jaw. They're not speaking of rubies where the eyes should be, nor pupils that eclipse and cling like darts in the dark. They're not speaking of croaky, high-pitched women, somewhere between crooning and beseeching, singing and forecasting. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after each phrase, perched on rusted stools, on old coke crates, or tattered red and green mats made of wicker. In England, they are decorative. Elsewhere, they are for prayer and vicar. They are not speaking of 40 bodies stowed in the back of a lorry charter flights to a place that is no longer home. They're not speaking of crumpled papers that state you have the right to remain. The ones the police have the right to restrain, right to prevent oxygen from getting to the brain. Instead, they are speaking of Rumi. They are speaking of wise men. They are speaking of Orion. It seems they like Muslims better back then. Thank you. I'm going to do, you, could, you don't have to clap in between every poem, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I'm going to do a poem, and this is dedicated to my sisters. One thing that I think is really beautiful, I don't know why I love it so much, but I love it when I see like a sheikh sitting in the audience, and the sheikh gets up, and brothers follow them. I just love it, it's just like respect and reverence, right? And I love being in spaces where sisters are, and sisters gather, and sisters come together, because they love Allah. Whether it's, you know, going to lectures, whether it's like they're around the sheikh and the sheikh is spending time with them. I just love to see women gathered together and thinking, how can I seek Allah? How can I find out about my Lord and my prophet, peace be upon him? And, um, <laughs> it's okay to clap, it's okay to clap, mashallah. And like, um, there's a very beautiful city called Medina Bay in Senegal. And it is a city dedicated to the love of Allah. There's not, a, there's not a time you walk around this city and you don't hear people making dhikr, praying, you know, worshipping. It's just so beautiful to be there. And I had the opportunity to go a few times. So just for your reference, yeah, when I go to Senegal, because I wasn't born in Senegal, they call me Tubab. And Tubab means white. 
So even though I'm black, I'm white. So this, um, this poem is called The Two Bab Black Girls of Medina Bay. Bismillah. The two bab black girls of Medina Bay glisten like Sayyidina Muhammad or Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like Noor, dripping from thicker bees, residue on their face, glow like brown wet tenor before it dries. Senegalese gold, Tuareg silver, a key rings on the hands of Aulia, inheritors of God. They supplicate a dua so sincere in English and broken Arabic and barely wall of hat tricks could not shoot nor score more succinctly than their lips that pray at night and say la ilaha illallah in masjids with green domes and makams in blessed villages where love of Allah is rife. And that's the end. I'm gonna go into the next one. No need to clap. I'm gonna go into the next one. And um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So this is something that we're starting to have more conversations about within our community, and I think it's really blessed, right? About the whole thing of mental health, right? I work for an organization um, that looks after young, um, young non-white people, essentially, where the organization's for everyone, but my team is specifically for young black people, brown people, Asian people, and we have discussions so that later on in life, they don't grow up and have, you know, challenges with mental health. Just like health, mental health is unstable, but if people have the opportunity to talk about it and, and talk about what they face in society, then hopefully these issues don't develop. And so I myself, I have to confess, in the past I've gone through mental health challenges. Sometimes I still do. And like, sometimes as a community, we're becoming more robust as a community and understanding these things, and it's beautiful to see people coming together and we have, you know, therapists who are Muslim, we have, you know, well-being practitioners who are Muslims, counselors, you know, all of these things because we realize that we need to nurture our community. And I think of my beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I think about the times where he too called out on his Lord because he was distressed. His well-being wasn't his well-being wasn't straight. He needed his Lord. He needed his wife at times. And so this is a poem for anyone who's suffering. Bismillah. Ya Noor. Ya Siraj. Ya Misbah. Rasul al rahma Nabi al fatha Mention of your name is a baraka. Name in our hearts is a baraka. Ya Noor. Ya Siraj. Ya Misbah. Rasul al rahma Nabi al fatha Mention of your name is a baraka. Name in our hearts is a baraka. Some have been told, if you love Allah, you will feel joyful at all times. Your lack of joy is lack of faith, and your lack of faith has no space among believers. Some have been told, you are not praying hard enough. Others are cast out and left to drown. Some are not cast out but look down upon any signs of struggle, doubt, weakness, question, any tales of dark days and you are cast away. Some believe that sadness and God cannot coexist as if Allah didn't make all of this. Some seek places to hide when they want to cry, when they struggle to pray, can't get up in the morning, hide away from family and friends. But to those of you who are struggling right now, I say to you, you are on the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the pinnacle of love itself. There is a solace in this sunnah. For every bright day, there was a rain cloud before it. No one, knew grief, no one knew grief more than our beloved prophet lost his mother, lost his father, lost his uncle, lost his wife, sons, companions, pushed out of his birthplace, rejected by his kin. He sought comfort just like you. Shedded tears just like you. Prayed to God, bended knees, I wonder. I wonder if his alhamdulillah was different after hurt. If the Allah in his subhanallah reverberated in his body because he understood the capacity of a broken heart and the power to love its Lord, long for its Lord, house its Lord. Ah, beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a role model for us all, prophet most gentle. Prophet most kind, Prophet the reason for all of mankind. Ya Noor, Ya Siraj, Ya Misbah. Rasul al Rahma, Nabi al Fatha. Mention of your name is a baraka. Name on our hearts is a baraka. 
Seeds bloom into trees. Trees bear fruits and leaves. And we are left in the spring of you. Follow in your footsteps, we do. You portrait of perfection, corrector of souls. Help us closer, closer to become whole through you. Ya Noor, Ya Siraj, Ya Misbah. Rasul al-Rahma, Nabil al-Fatah. Mention of your name is a baraka. Name in our hearts is a baraka. Seeds blooms into trees. Trees bear fruits and leaves. And we are left in the spring of you. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. I have one more poem, and despite the line or the title of the poem, it's not dedicated to men. It's dedicated to my sisters. Particularly, <laughs> could we have a round of applause for our sisters, please? It's dedicated to our sisters, for those who are married and for those who are single. Um, I don't know about you, but I love far too easily. I don't know what's wrong with my genealogy, but I love far too easily. But I've come to realize that like, there always has to be space in our hearts for Allah. And so for those of you who are cultivating space in your heart for Allah, for those of you who have cultivated space, and for those brothers who don't understand, this poem is for you. Bismillah. To all the men who ask, why are you single as a chat up line? They ask me why I'm single. I shy away from the truth. Spiritual women attract broken men and like a nurse, I tend to them. It's not that I've never had relationships, it's just there's a thin line between lover and healer. I am often both and he is often neither. He is the one in need and I mostly have the ability to rejuvenate when I deplete. They come to me wounded, and it would seem my womb has a thing for making my heart their remedy. Them idling on sacred ground, somebody else's sacred house. I act placid as they set God's house alight to keep them warm. And when they're done, I out their flame with acid, scooping up the flesh that's left behind. Knowing these scars will heal with time, because who does not want a woman who can heal like alchemy, who can ease pains and sorrows, mixing elixirs out of her tears, clothes and aloes? Please tell me, who does not want a woman who would give all of herself until she is hollow? God's home is hollow. God's heart and home is hollow. I am shallow, yet drowning still. It's best I'm single, for now, that's God's will. Pen has lifted feather and quill. We are remodeling, house into home, so the next man who enters will have to take off his shoes and bow at God's throne. My name is Manira Pilgrim, and that's it. Thank you.